good evening everybody uh, and welcome to the Primary Languages Network webinar on tracking and assessment. It's led by me, Janet Lloyd. If you haven't met me before, then welcome. I am the founder of Primary Languages Network and was a primary strategy consultant for Primary Languages prior to that in Warrington. Uh, and now lead our network, which has approximately 250 schools within it. Um, we want to take you through our tracking and assessment tools because we're often asked questions about these. And hopefully, as we talk through them, um, if you are not yet a, me a member of the network, there will still be things that you will find useful and informative um, and points for you to reflect upon or consider and to take away. Um, you can see that it says that all the documents are hyperlinked for later use by our network members and that this PowerPoint will be loaded up into the network resources area of our VLE and that's our virtual learning environment. You'll be able to download it, click onto the hyperlinks and um, work your way through each of the documents should you want to look at them at a later date. Before we start, could I just ask you to have a look at the information on this slide? I thought it was important just to make sure that everybody understood the acronyms I would be using. So PFL stands for Primary Foreign Languages, um, and AFL, hopefully we all understand, means Assessment for Learning. Um, I hope those members of the network already understand that our assessment takes place in Key Stage 2 and not in Key Stage 1. Um, and that all our tracking and assessment tools are optional. I think that's really important that you should use them as they are deemed appropriate in your own individual schools. You'll see as we work through this um, webinar that I'll refer to age or stage appropriate. And when I go out to meet people, I talk to people about the fact that year six children can be working at a year three level of language learning because they are beginner learners. So in some schools, you're rolling out languages for the first time, um, you're feeling more confident about it, and your year six children are potentially working um, on the same language learning skills and with some of the same materials as year three, or potentially they've moved on a stage and now year four, five, and six are all working with um, year four materials and therefore are at what I would deem stage two. Of language learning. I'll just give you a brief moment to consider everything I said there and then we'll move on. I think it's also important um, that you understand that our network with its 250 schools has many teachers who provide me not only with inspiration but also opportunities to reflect and also opportunities um, to be challenged on the way we move forward and so the good practice and the advice we're going to give here comes from a, a vast range of primary specialist teachers both primary specialist language teachers and primary classroom specialist teachers and senior management all of whom have their own requirements concerning um, tracking and assessment. During the webinar, therefore, we're going to be looking at the national and international tools and guidance that we have used to inform our assessment. We're going to consider how we measure progress and the different ways that we can measure progress. We're going to take a look at some formative assessment and some summative ass assessment tools. So formative is that which keeps on explaining to us and helping us to have that dialogue with the children and an understanding of where the children are coming from in their learning. And summative assessment is that which we produce at the end of uh, a period of time, normally the end of the year or the end of four years, to look at progress across a cohort, progress across a group of children, or progress of the whole school in the um, progression in learning the language and the language learning skills that the children are acquiring. Really importantly, the language learning skills tell us the competency of the child in their understanding of how we learn a language, because we really don't know which language these children in the future may need to learn, and therefore we are providing them with their own personal tools and equipping them to be able to go out there and other, learn other languages. 
To this end, within our network, you can see below a range in point four of materials and resources that we can offer network members. And we're going to look through these and talk about how we can use these in our own environments. Um, if you have any questions, then at the end of this webinar, you can pose the questions to me and I'll try to answer them. Alternatively, you're going to be able to get in touch with the network coordinator by email. To pose the questions during the, at the end of the webinar, you'll need to use the chat um, tool on this um, webinar. You can see in point four that we have a list of hyperlinked resources that we'll be talking about from tracking sheets and assessment for learning clouds right through to assessment data spreadsheets. All of these are housed for our network members on the VLE. And for those who are not afraid with the acronym VLE, that means our virtual learning environment. It means that you can therefore have a dialogue between a class teacher or a PPA teacher and the coordinator or the coordinator and senior management via the virtual learning environment. And you are able to collect and record data and keep that in your own user files on the VLE. And when we come out to schools to talk to you about this, we explain that your user files are unique to your school. You are the only people that can go into those user files um, and they belong to you. And this allows you to feel um, comfortable and safe in loading up material and resources that are pertinent or very particular to children. So for example, children's photographs, children's work with names on, sound files, only you in school can access these. And the key elements that we've had to consider over a period of time since 2011 and ever since 2013 when the DfE attainment targets um, were put in place are uh, bullet pointed here. And the publications that we have used or have consulted or adapted to produce our tracking and assessment tools are listed in the publications section. I'll give you a moment or two just to have a look at this slide and take in what you can see. I think it's very important um, that formative assessment is mentioned right at the top because formative assessment for me um, really guides my teaching and learning or the teaching and learning of my colleagues and we are providing young learners with an opportunity to feel competent and successful in a new language and therefore formative assessment should be happening at all times informally or more formally, um, with you observing what children are doing or just taking back feedback by listening in when we do um, maybe a quiz quiz swap activity around the classroom or when you invite a child maybe to speak to another child or potentially when you have um, seen work on a mini whiteboard that's drafted, just glancing at it and seeing how the children or child is progressing. So formative assessment is happening at all times. And summative assessment um, really should be at the end of the year as a celebration of where the children have moved to and what progress they have made and can be a useful diagnostic tool for where you start the following year or potentially as you go throughout the year if you block your summative assessments exactly what your next point is with the children. For us, one of our biggest challenges is that there are so many network schools and you've all got very varying assessment requirements. And some schools have gone down a route where all the curriculum is being put into one type of assessment data collection process. Or it may be that we've got isolated teachers working in one classroom, but not in another classroom. Or we have two languages happening in a school. Um, so we've had to make sure that what we've produced gives you a range of choices to suit the different environments that you're working in. And most importantly, your feedback is very important to us. So we keep on reflecting on what you say and everything is fed back to me. 
at the moment Catherine our network coordinator is pivotal in this because she feeds back what she discusses with you in your one-to-one -one meetings as webinars and I take that on board uh, and a week ago I was in Garstang and was talking with a teacher there and we were discussing the school's requirements and I found it very interesting to see where that school was in its procedures and also how it was progressing with non-specialist teachers learning a language and all these things get put into what we produce. The publications that I mentioned are um, publications that have informed how we've developed the tracking and assessment tools and the common European framework of reference is something that some of you may already have been measured against so if you've been away with Erasmus you will have been asked were you A1, A2, B1, B2 in your um, assessment, uh, in your ability to speak um, the foreign language, to speak French or Spanish. And it's through that that you have been able uh, to then be placed in the correct group of teachers and you've progressed whilst you've been out and abroad in the foreign language. The DfE attainment targets, there are 12 of them. And uh, every opportunity, we offer you the opportunity to see the DfE attainment targets. They are signposts for the four years across Key Stage 2 from Year 3 to Year 6 and how the children um, should be progressing toward those signposts is further explained by the way that you develop activities for Stage 1 learners, Stage 2 learners, Stage 3 learners, Stage 4 learners as they work in each of those 12 attainment targets. The official guidance that we've had from the government on assessment across primary, um, the primary curriculum is in the DfE assessment principles document. Uh, and quite a lot of it is common sense really, um, talking about uh, tangible progress, reporting to parents, making sure that um, progress is in line with national progress, etc. Um, and the Key Stage 2 framework, which some of the older people listening in will remember, is the document that we all used to work with, which has got oracy, that's listening and speaking, literacy, that's reading and writing, uh, knowledge about language and intercultural understanding, learning objectives from year three to year six. Making and marking progress was produced um, toward the end of um, the life of Asset Languages and Silton was a way of demonstrating and giving you tangible um, tests that you could do with the children to assess their progress in primary languages. And all of this has been compiled into a chart for Primary Languages Network, where we've aligned these DfE attainment targets with the Key Stage 2 framework objectives and the Common European Framework Level A1 listening, speaking, reading and writing descriptors to come up with sensible can-do statements very much linked to the making and marking progress can-do statements for children in year three, four, five and six or as I often refer to them stage one, two, three and four of key stage two language learning. Quite a lot to take in there but you'll get um, a recorded link to this webinar so you can go back and listen to what I've said. Um, if you click through, for example, on the DfE attainment targets, up will come so that you can see the DfE attainment targets uh, and then you can read through, for example, the 12 bullet points and see them as signposts. So these signposts are the only official document we have from the DfE for the Key Stage 2 programme of study for languages and throughout the course, for example, of four years from year three to year six, children are learning how to listen attentively to spoken language, or children are exploring the patterns and sounds of language. And right from year three, when children begin to say their names, or give an age, or say colours, they are acquiring skills that they can use, for example, to describe people, places, and things, and actions orally and in writing until in year six we are looking for children to be writing extended sentences and potentially a couple of sentences that could be seen as a very simple text. So this document I feel will be very useful to you. Um, going back to the PowerPoint slides now.
we need to just explain why and what we're tracking and what we're assessing in primary foreign languages and all the ingredients below have needed to be considered so that what we are producing for you is something that is of value in your schools. So if you look through the bullet points, I'm sure there are things here that you would have thought of yourself. Um, we need to measure language learning skills, that's good progress. We need to be proving to people that we are actually making a difference to the learning of the children. And then we need to decide next steps or we need to consider remedial actions from that. We want reliable information for everybody, for the whole learning community, for schools, for parents and for children on how the children are progressing. And that can be in something they take home to show their parents or it can be something that at the end of the year you report um, through a school report. We need to make sure it's tangible progress, that children can see what it is they are progressing in and can be proud of it and that teachers have got evidence and can share it in individual schools. We need to make sure that the benchmarks we're using for assessment are aligned against international and national good progress in languages. Uh, and we, in some of our schools, are needing to bring primary foreign language assessment in line with other primary curriculum areas. And that gives primary languages strength as well by doing that. And they are, children will naturally be progressing in the four core um, language skills of listening, speaking, reading and writing. In languages we listen before we speak generally and I know that a lot of you talk about speaking and listening but in languages when it's a foreign language you need to listen first and that natural order of listening, speaking, reading and writing doesn't mean we have to do that every lesson but elements of these four core skills will happen each lesson and we need to be, make sure that the children are progressing in language learning skills and they are the skills of memory or recall um, or sentence structure or exploring sounds and practicing listening skills etc and also the assessment that we do is an excellent opportunity to hand on to key stage three some very concrete evidence of what the children have been able to do we have a couple of secondary schools that work with us and they can dip into the user files of their primary schools. So it's a wonderful way to use the user files to be able to load up evidence to share with Key Stage 3 that really is tangible evidence of progress in the learning of the children. Um, you'll see in italics at the bottom though, there is a health warning and that is at the present moment, there is no stipulated national requirement for assessment in a primary foreign language. However, Formative assessment helps our teaching, summative assessment gives us a next step forward and we can see progress over time. So I feel that it's important that we know how we are progressing. We brought all of that together and there are now on the VLE four options. People use a combination of these options when they are working in their own schools. They are in the red boxes that you can see here. I'll just give you a brief moment to look at those four red boxes and I'll, then I'll talk further. Okay, the class tracking sheets are sheets that we offer you, one per year class, um, and they are for stage one, stage two, stage three, and stage four of learning. So I'm taking you onto the VLE here and I'm showing you that they are Word documents. They're Word documents so that you can change them if necessary to suit your own school. I'm going to open up the stage three one just to show you what's on there, but we'll be talking about it in more detail and, and looking, at in, uh, looking at it more exactly in a minute. It's a two-sided document. It's a Word document and we are recommending that you have one of those documents per class for a teacher. You can clipboard these and put these into your own uh, area on the VLE using the clipboard icon. So you can put them in user files and put them there for teachers to be able to use. They can be downloaded, uh, highlighted in the desktop and then returned back into user files. So that's the first element that, or option that we are offering you. We are also offering you assessment for learning clouds and these came about because of um, one of our schools where they wanted to bring that in, in line with other um, curriculum areas and they wanted the children to be able to demonstrate what they could do. If I was to click on here I'd take you through to the assessment for learning clouds for year three, four, 
three, four, or five, and six, but we'll look at in more detail later on. Um, so we then can move on to offering you puzzle outs, and I've just revamped the puzzle outs, and they're so much better now. And for those of you that have been using them in the past, I think you'll find this too. Um, and these are a, a series of PowerPoints which have got assessment on them. There are French ones and Spanish ones. I'll take you into the French ones. They are grouped by year group from year three to year six. There's a um, teacher's guide to puzzle out and there's a rationale that takes you how, through how we got to these puzzle outs. There is a puzzle out for every half term, for every year group from year three to year six. Um, and we'll be looking in more detail at those um, once we move on. Underneath the puzzle outs, you'll see that there are three dots. And again, you can click for these and move these into user files so that teachers can use them. And when I'm talking about user files, if I take you to our home page, you will have a user file icon. It will look somewhat different to my home page, but you'll have a user file icon. And when you click in there, that is your area on the VLA if you're a network member where you can store these things. Um, and the final option we offer you are tracker options, and these are for phonics and for grammar. So therefore we've covered um, class coverage, we've been able to cover in here DFE attainment targets, we've got children's um, feedback, we've got um, assessments on the four core skills, listening, speaking, reading and writing. Uh, we've got tracker options for phonics and grammar. So we've tried to give you as many options as are necessary or that we are finding necessary within our network and you'll see that we've begun now on the slides to offer you the models we see so you might be able to see here in these bullet points a model of what your school does already or maybe your next step or maybe your first step in using um, tracking and assessment most schools tend to start with a tracking sheet in place for each classroom uh, and then may move on to assessment for learning sheets in children's books and then from that, potentially, they'll move on to trialing a Puzzle It Out or a series of activities from Puzzle It Out. That seems to be the way forward for lots of schools. So I'll just give you a brief moment to look at that again in some detail. Um, we need you to know where to find the tracking and assessment tools if you are a Primary Languages Network member and where they are on the VLE. These two boxes here can guide you as um, a coordinator, first of all, um, to the tracking and assessment folder. Um, and if you click through on this link, you go through to tracking and assessment. And here are all the range of things that we are talking about this evening in the tracking and assessment area on the VLE. You can also find this by going into teaching resources. And in teaching resources, you can just click through to tracking and assessment. So that can help you. Your class teachers are more likely to find their tracking and assessment area in the ready-made French or Spanish scheme of work and at the bottom of the table as you open up ready-made French, Spanish or ready-made um, ready -made French or ready-made Spanish you will find a planning area and in there are all the things that your teachers might need for their own classrooms to manage tracking and assessment. And the appropriate puzzle it outs are actually in folders within the body of ready made. So I'll just show you that briefly. So I'm going to go in through tracking and assessment. I'm going to take the home button to get myself there because mine looks slightly different to yours. You will have probably a direct hyperlink to one of the schemes of work. This is the ready made French scheme of work. Here's the landing page. At the bottom of the page, you'll find your planning. If you opened up year three planning, your teacher has everything they require there to help them with their, um, at the beginning of the year, organizing the tracking and assessment. And if you were to go in, for example, to numbers, which is year three, autumn one, then you will see that if we have a look on there, there are folders. Uh, and if we have assessment, it would be here. And if we were to go into um, 2B, for example, here, we would see the same thing and you have a link to assessment so you can go straight through to the assessment folder and here's your puzzle out. So your teachers can find their way through to different things. Um, 
now let's have a little bit look in a little bit of detail at the different components. I mentioned the DFE attainment targets and that's where it really starts. So we need to have a look at year four, summer one, because I've selected this lesson and it's the walking through the jungle lesson in French that I'm going to show you. It exists in Spanish as well and it exists in a certain way in German. These are the things that we are looking at in year four, summer one with stage two learners, so they're in their second year of learning a language. Every lesson plan we have has a maximum of three activities, and the lessons also now have a differentiated follow-up activity sheet at the end, um, and that means there's a, an easy or a plus follow-up sheet, so you can use those for consolidation or for extension, or um, as a way of being creative but making sure that you've got the difference between the easy and the plus levels. And every core activity in the lesson plan has got its DFE attainment target or targets that we think are suitable to the activity and an appropriate language learning skill objective, which is linked to the key stage two framework and is the actual learning objective for that activity at this stage of the children's learning. So I'm just going to open up Walking Through the Jungle and here will come up a lesson plan. They're slightly small, the word documents on this screen, so you might need to go to the VLE yourself to have a look at them. You'll see there are three activities. They've all got a title. You'll see there is a DFE attainment target underneath each activity, which tells you the one of the 12 or maybe more than like sometimes two DFE attainment targets, signposted so you know. And here are the key stage two framework skill level uh, objectives that you're working with at this stage with the children. We've now begun to introduce um, a way of you being able to sit back and inform, informally assess children's progress with the clips that we're now putting straight into the um, lesson plans that you can click through to. And this is one with Emily talking the children through the animals in the jungle. Emily will take the children through the um, activity. She'll set them up with a challenge. And this is a really good way for you to have some informal assessment of how the children are progressing, what they are learning, um, and what they're understanding and what your next steps need to be with the children. Um, and I mentioned that at the end of every lesson now, you're going to find these easy and plus activities. So these, again, you can just click straight through to them and you can use these to support children who need a little bit more support or um, you can use these to extend children who perhaps can move that a little bit further in the way they've understood what you've been doing. So they also could be very valuable after you've sort of used diagnostic tools or just informal observation to work out what to do your next steps. Um, moving on from there, I think it's really important then that um, we understand what the class tracking sheets could do. The class tracking sheet allows for coverage of content. It allows you to look at the phonics development and record it, to record how you may have looked at grammar development, to record whether you've used Puzzle It Out during this um, half term or whether you've, uh, which of the DFE attainment targets you've covered. If we have a quick look at a tracking sheet, you will see that the tracking sheet is the one where it is now for year two and um, for year four, stage two, and fits with the jungle animals. First of all, you can highlight the teacher can record the class, the year group, and um, the language studied. If you have one of our associate teachers, then this may be being filled in by the associate teacher and handed to the class teacher just so the class teacher is aware of what the children are doing. The coverage during the course of a half term can be highlighted. So for example, if we're doing jungle animals, well there we just met jungle animals, so we can highlight that and we'll know that we're going to move on to describe jungle animals and use body parts and colors, so we can highlight that. So bit by bit, we're building up a knowledge of the coverage of the content. If you've used a phonics tracker, then you'll be able to add that information in here. So in summer one, for example, it might be about um, some sounds that you've been listening to in phrases about illness. So you can note down what the sound was um, and you can look at the sound spelling links. You can date it um, and maybe you've got some evidence. You could um, put a symbol for evidence and date that. 
you can use a grammar tracker again and these follow naturally through the course and the body of the lesson plans but also with follow-up activities so you can highlight these not everybody is using these most people are using the coverage potentially some of you might now be looking at phonics I um, don't often see people highlighting the grammar yet, but I think people are beginning to. And then if you've used any of the puzzler out sheets, you can circle if it was the listening you used in autumn one and the speaking you used in autumn one. But in then in summer two, you've done the reading and the writing. You could circle that and it just reminds you what you've done. And then I mentioned that every lesson has got the DFE attainment targets. Well, here you can... Um, date and evidence three times in the year just three times in the year the fact that the children have explored a particular dfe attainment target been working with a specific skill level and objective dated and evidenced and then you can refer back to it in the future to show senior management or to show parents how the children have worked through all 12 attainment targets this column won't change from year three to year six but the second column does change because from stage one through to stage four, the objectives will become slightly more demanding that are linked to the 12 DFE signposts. And this record here will be proof of the fact that through the course of the year, the children have been exposed and explored and investigated the DFE attainment targets and they've been working at this skill level. Again, if you want to ask more, then Catherine will be able to talk you through this in your one-to-one -one as well. Um, the models we see are that class teachers are keeping these just for their own reference, but we also see now really good models where they're being shared via user files with coordinators, and the coordinator is keeping a record for school documentation, should inspectors ask about the progress the children are making and the exposure they have to the DFE attainment targets. The assessment for learning clouds was set up by Kate Kennedy at Penkers Primary um, because the, the teachers really wanted the children to be involved in their learning and they were quite correct because obviously assessment for learning clouds are not new. We looked at the European languages portfolio um, and we considered the bubbles that were there but felt that we needed to extend them further to address the DfE attainment targets and language learning skills. They operate just like um, you would with any other AFL clouds on a three ticks, two ticks, one tick, or three smiley faces, two smiley faces, etc. Three stars, two stars. They are Word documents. They should be glued into children's books. The Word documents so that you can blow them up and make them bigger. You can reduce the content in the bubbles. You can take away or add your own objectives. Um, but this is for guidance or for some schools is the exact record that you might use. If you've been looking at jungle animals, for example, in that lesson, we've probably been listening and identifying three animals and maybe we've been looking at colours. Interestingly, I saw these used with Kate Kennedy at St Margaret's to great effect and she was using them to inform her next step. They were in year five and they were doing fruit and vegetables and children had been very honest in the way they had and um, put three ticks or two ticks or one tick or a question mark to query whether they felt confident or not. And we think this is a very valuable way of you having a dialogue with your pupils. Um, so that is another option for you. So you've now got tracking sheets, you've got assessment for learning sheets. The third option we prepared for you are puzzle outs. And if you've been working with us for a while, you know that we've been building these over a period of time. And it has taken us a period of time now to feel confident with what we have. We knew that we couldn't just make them against fresh air. We knew that we needed to uh, have a reason for assessment and we knew that we needed to uh, align them with um, national or international good practice. And so we've based them on A1 competency and the common European framework of reference. And there are can-do statements. And to this end, we've created assessment benchmark descriptors. And we first made these for Claire, Claire de Bray, and she was working in a school where the teachers wanted to know what it was every half term the children should be doing to be meeting um, the next stage in their competency toward becoming competent at A1 
at the end of year six. So exceeding, we will be saying, is demonstrating more than the descriptors you're going to see below. Meeting is demonstrating the ability to achieve confidently the descriptor. And emerging is still working toward the descriptor. We feel that you should look at each of the four, four, four core skills three times in the year. So you may do listening and speaking, for example, in one half term and reading and writing in another half term. Or in some schools, teachers are trying to do listening, speaking, reading and writing with all children as one straight puzzle it out assessment test every half term. You can see here that summer one is talking about the jungle animals and you've got a listening descriptor, a reading descriptor, a speaking descriptor and a writing descriptor. And the important thing about this as well is that they need to demonstrate what's written there to be meeting the level we're expecting for the children at this stage. Um, and you'd need to see it three times in the year in speaking to say that they at the end summatively, in summative assessment, were meeting the stage we think they should be at at the end of the year. Uh, the puzzle outs have been made much more simple for you to use and I'm going to show you these now. Uh, I'm taking you to the year four summer one descriptor um, and um, this is a um, PowerPoint now where you would need to run off for the children the first two slides. The first two slides deal with listening, speaking, reading and writing. We've inserted the reading into the document there because before you had to sort of handle it for yourself. We've made it very child friendly. Um, the third slide is for your teachers just to remind them what to do every time when they're um, using these puzzle outs. And this sheet is the same for every half term, so your teachers are reading the same thing, so they won't need to read it every time. We've really found that with the speaking activity, it's best as a peer assessment, with you working with a small group of children, potentially six children, and then every time you do the assessment, moving to another six as a sample group. But the children are really honest, uh, and they've just got to recall for their pupil a smiley face, a flat face, or a non-smiley face on whether or not they feel their partner completed the speaking test. Um, and if you weren't sure, if you thought somebody might have been just being a bit unkind to the, their partner, you could then uh, later on ask them to demonstrate for you that they can complete the speaking element. Um, we've made sure that there is a page that explains to the teacher and to um, anybody who's gonna be delivering the test, what at stage two, the children should be doing to um, meet the level required to say that they are on target at the end of the year to be at the correct stage toward A1 competency for the Common European Framework of Reference. Um, there is a document that takes you through each activity, so listening, speaking, reading and writing. Um, it tells you the type of activity they are and what the teacher then will be doing with them as an actual real activity. Okay, so listening to the description of a fantastical animal, for example, and playing the sound file several times. And then it gives you the meeting requirements. The only two pages the children need are page one and two. The rest is for teacher reference. And the final page has got the listening transcript in English and in French or in English and in Spanish. It has an example of what you'd be wanting the children to achieve in the speaking, so you can talk the children through this prior to the assessment. It gives you an example of the level we think the children should be producing in the writing for this stage, and it gives you the answers to the reading. And um, the click-through link here takes you straight through to listening, and you'd be able to hear a native speaker reading the text. I think that's an awful lot better than before where the sound file was separate. So if you've been working with our puzzlets out before, I think this really helps you now because it's all been put together and moved so that you can um, access it from this PowerPoint. So there are six slides and the first two slides are the slides that are pertinent to the children. There's your listening and your speaking. Here's your reading and your writing. And what we find is that some teachers go, well, this 
I am lesson that listening fits in beautifully with what I've been doing. I'll do the listening completely independently of everything else because it fits in, and then I can use it as a re and record how the children have done. People shouldn't be frightened of allowing the children to peer mark. I think the part that they would struggle to peer mark is the writing, and in this instance, you need to take the writing in. But I think the other areas can be peer marked by the children, which reduces the quantity of marking for yourself. Something important that I want to highlight is, and it was Steph Stewart who led me to this. Steph Stewart is one of our associate teachers and um, is a very, very competent year six primary school teacher as well. She pointed out to me that particularly in Upper Key Stage 2, we really needed to have differentiated tasks for reading and writing because of the different abilities that are very obvious amongst children at this point in their learning. And so in Upper Key Stage 2, we now have two reading and writing pages, a hexagons page, which is for the children who are meeting or are able to meet stage three or stage four um, assessment benchmark descriptors and circles which is for children who you really feel would struggle to meet that stage and um, there may potentially in the future be a move by me to add something similar occasionally in lower key stage two and there is no reason why you couldn't do that for yourselves in stage two have a hexagons and a circles reading and writing. Uh, models that we're beginning to see are at the bottom um, and the puzzle it out because of the nature of them, the way they're set up and the name, don't make the children feel that it's sheer assessment. They actually enjoy the activities and we've fitted in messages in the bottle, draft tweets, um, creative activities linked to the units of work to do with fancy dress, or to do with recipes, etc. So it's also a celebration of the work the children have been doing. I'm not sure anybody really has, has of yet used the phonics and grammar trackers, but they are also there now for you to be able to use. The phonics tracker is a very simple um, ticker chart. You just tick as you listen and you're listening out for. And we have provided you with a sound file, with an overview and with the key sound you could potentially be listening for with the children. Um, and it's a case of can the children hear that particular sound. And um, if you click through here, you can see the activity itself. So for example, here's the listen out guide. It gives the teacher clear directions how to use it. And at the bottom of the chart, at the bottom of the page, um, you can then go and use the other documents to be able to use the ticker chart correctly with the children. Um, these sit in the um, scheme of work. And so, for example, this particular one is in a folder sitting in um, the follow-up, assess and explore of ready-made. Um, there's a grammar tracker as well, which again asks you to look with the children at whether or not they can competently use maybe adjectives, verbs or nouns. And in summer one, they'll be looking at adjectives in year four. And so when we open up this document, it has a suggestion for you in summer one of whether the children can unmuddle and recognise, reorganise accurately descriptive phrases. And you're given an example of a muddled up tiger sentence and how you could unmuddle it. Can the children identify in which order this should be written and where the adjective should sit? So those are things that you maybe in the future want to start considering using. Currently, I don't think they're being used particularly, uh, but it's a quick snapshot of progress in grammar and their ability to understand sounds. Um, finally, these are lots of different ways that we find that people are keeping evidence and a record of progress using the VLA and the ready-made scheme of work. I think quite a lot of you now are using the marking sheets. Um, Robert produced the first one of these for Spanish at Barrow Hall and we took this and reproduced it for French. Teachers love it, it's a simple marking code stuck in the children's book and actually I saw evidence today from Kate Percival where she's used um, some of these uh, statements to verify with children where she thinks they are at in the work they have done for her on grammar kebabs. Very simple to use, one for French, one for Spanish, and there is one for German. 
um, and also we think that a lot of you now are using your user files as a unique storage place for both your tracking sheets and for all the things you can see below here. Ways of getting snapshots and evidence of children's work. And if you click through on this hyperlink here, you can find out how to have mobile access to the VLE through iPads and phones. So you can take quick photographs of work children have done and load it immediately into the user files. It takes seconds by accessing your primary languages network, VLE, from your phone or iPad. Um, we have got primary languages assessment data spreadsheets. Some of you are using these. You can download the sample spreadsheet and see how to use it. It's a simple drop down menu where once you've loaded all the children's names, you just need to click on emerging, meeting or exceeding for each child. And should you have problems with these, again, Catherine will be able to help you and support you to understand how to use these better. And again, these can, with the three dots, be put into your uh, clipboarded and put into your own user files. Um, finally, um, we're coming to the end of this webinar, um, I just want to highlight with you the things that are happening next. If you want to discuss anything further, then Catherine is the person to discuss um, assessment or the VLE or lesson plans with, and you can share your ideas and thoughts. Should you want to have a look around the uh, primary languages VLE and you're not a member and you think it might be suitable for your school, then Steph is available via that email to give you a demonstration and to show you around. Um, the next webinar is next week. It's not as solid as this one has been. It's creative and lively. It's uh, delivered by Robert, who is now delivering three creative webinars for us a year. And it's on dragons and unicorns. And I've seen the materials, and I'm excited. And you can sign up by clicking the link here, or just going to Primary Languages Network website via this address and registering in our meetings and CPD area. And the conference has gone live. Um, you can now sign up. We hope you um, are able to come. Premium network members get a free place. Um, it's always the most joyous occasion. Um, you can read what's happening. You can find out what we're talking about. Bernadette Holmes, who drafted the DFE attainment targets, is going to be uh, leading us out on that morning of the conference. Dan, who was with us last year, is going to be talking to us about language learning skills. Uh, Julie Prince is going to be with us too and talking about literacy and how we can link communication languages and literacy together and then our wonderful associates are speaking in the afternoon about how they add sparkle to every lesson they teach. Um, we now have three main exhibitors. We think we will potentially have about six exhibitors in total um, and the costs are below. You click on here to book your place and we'd love you to be with us. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask your questions now. Thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed what you've heard, and I think you'll need to go back and reflect on this again. There's no one's, no one's got any questions. <laughs>